The Jerks and Profar team meeting game. Padres rolled the Giants on March 31st, 13 4, and they really beat up on the Giants starter who was pitching for the first time in two years, essentially in the big leagues. Uh, Dalton Jeffries, nine runs in the first two innings for the Padres. We're going to talk about it all Sunday night long. Here's the deal if you are here. A couple of, there's a couple of rules. Like rules are rules here because the Padres had a, had a nice offensive series. We need to get to 6,000 subscribers, um, according to our bosses on the wrap-up show. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, we're trying to hit 6,000 in April, and we're within just a couple of hundred. So please subscribe. Here's the other rule. As you make your way in live or on replay, can you hit that like button? We're trying to get to 200 likes of this video here tonight. We've been getting close to that number here recently because of you. Um, it takes one second to do that, subscribe or like. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, please do. So smash the like button, subscribe, follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. We appreciate your super chats and your memberships. We see a membership has already rolled in here tonight. Thank you, James, for your loyal support of the channel. If you become a member, you get emojis, badges, additional content as well. And if you want to make sure we get your comment, just click the dollar sign below the chat box. We get to every single super chat. Um, what's interesting is it's a series split, but it feels like a pretty good series and a pretty good start for the Padres. I mean, this offense looks nothing like last year's offense, Jim. You saw the Kevin AC note I tweeted out today where they just didn't have four or five run innings last year. They've already had a handful of four and five run innings, including two today, a four run inning and a five run inning in a big win, 13-4. I mean, you can look at it both ways, and if you want to go the route of, well, they should have lost three or four, we have an argument there. I mean, if if the Giants reliever, I forget who it was, on opening day doesn't blow it in the seventh inning. Right, one-run game, yeah. You potentially could have lost three or four. Or you could look at it a different way, more positive outlook. Great comeback on opening day, and after having two games where the offense struggled, and the you know kind of got dominated by their pitching. You come out today and you take advantage of a guy who I mean, let's face it, gr a amazing story to come back and just yep. even pitch in the big leagues. Like you kind of feel almost bad for the guy because he got lit up today after hearing his story. Was well, you took a time Tommy John and thoracic outlet syndrome? I think. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. a, a, I don't want to give this guy shit at all because it's it's I mean, to do no, what he you take did, advantage and uh, hopefully he'll, i'm sure he'll i mean you're not going to pitch worse than this so i'm sure he'll have no. more opportunities but look the thing is you took advantage of it and you faced a pitcher today who probably had a lot of nerves who i mean let's be real here probably shouldn't be in the big leagues like he's probably more of a minor league guy but to get to the big leagues is, is a great accomplishment for him and you took advantage of it and you jumped all over this guy in the first inning and the first three innings you scored nine runs um it's exactly what you want to do to, in, in a situation where um, the offense was not looking great after you know to the previous two games, and today everybody had a hit in the lineup, um, and it was just a fantastic day. We'll get to Michael King, but just looking at the offense, it was fantastic. Bogarts had two hits again today. Hassan Kim went three for four with that big home run. Um, can't be Sano. I mean, yeah, he's it's, a it is such a downgrade when he's not in the lineup as far as catching goes. Like the the Campy Sano to Higa, Higashioka is going to be just a, a massive downgrade every time mm -hmm. he's not in that lineup. Um, and then Grant Pauly, thank God he's back. He's he's in the starting lineup, which he should be continuously in the starting lineup from here on out until Machado can play third base again. And even then, then don't have the age. And he should DH. And then Jackson Merrill had a nice day, had two hits, um, an RBI double, and uh, had two runs scored. Overall, offense was fantastic today. I thought there was a really interesting point. Um, I caught it on Marty Caswell's uh, YouTube page, Marty Caswell TV, in the locker room with Merrill, who made an interesting point. We Well, we weren't on yesterday, but I hadn't even thought about it yesterday, which was, yeah, we didn't win the game, but there was a win in there getting to their closer in the ninth inning. They led 9-1 into the ninth. They had to use their closer in the ninth inning. We saw it as a win. And not that you necessarily carry momentum over, but they had a pair of home runs in the ninth inning, including Paulie's first career hit. I thought that was an interesting point. And then to do what they did in the first couple of innings for Michael King, who... Let's face it, I heard from Michael King postgame as well um, on Marty's YouTube channel, and he had no command of anything, yet still was able to allow just a couple of runs. So I think all in all, you'll take it, especially with that large lead. Um, E-Racing with Dale, thank you so much for the super chat. We're just getting started here tonight, guys. Please subscribe and smash that like button. We're trying to get to 200 likes here tonight. We're trying to get to 6,000 
subscribers. We'll get to all your super chats if you want to interact with us and support our work. Uh, E-Racing with Dale, thank you, ma'am. He says, Paul, you got to be the starter over Wade. King looked good minus the walks. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, I was the play. There's seven of them. Um, that's the stuff, though. We needed fam and Profar, a bench player. Um, well, Profar was like, so did you follow this from Cam? I mean, I don't have any particulars other None. than Cam told Marty that Profar kind of motivated the team before the game. I don't know if it was a team meeting, but said some inspiring words before today's game. Yeah, I don't think. I would not, not consider is it? I would not consider this a team meeting. I would Ooh, not consider why? this a closed door team meeting because why? He might have just like, rallied him up. Yeah, I mean, we know Profar. He's I mean, mostly here for good vibes. vibes. He's here for here's here, he's here for vibes. Like if he can give you anything <laughs> offensively, then it's a it's a positive. And by the way, he's actually not I mean, he's, he's been a, good. It's in 294 this year, six games. Well, again, it's so early to read into any of this, right? Yeah, but hey, um, it's better than like the alternative, which is like maybe 094. 094. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? I mean, yep. shit, if you can get, you get pro far, like at any 18 at bat stretch to hit 294 with an 808 OPS, yeah. like you'll freaking take that every time. Um, right. So, yeah, I mean, I don't consider this at all like a team meeting. It's probably was just like, a, you know, one of those things where it's a day game after a long night game. And I mean, you probably saw probably honestly, the Giants were probably feeling it today. And I'm sure the Padres are feeling it, too. And Profar probably felt that on the on his end with with the Padres. And maybe was like, I need to say something to get these guys up because it kind of feels after a day game after a night game. Everyone's maybe down a little bit, like as far as like the energy level goes. I mean, I think anything's possible. I'm with you. I don't call it. There's no team meeting for a team that's played three games since, you know, the Korea series. So I think it was more of something that, and again, maybe some of it's lost in translation because Kim just kind of mentioned it um, in his answer through a translator that Profar, you know, inspired the team before the game. But um, listen, I'll say this as well. Pedro Avila today did good work, like really good work. Um, needed that because I'm him. looking at, I mean, three innings just to give them length, essentially, because King went four innings, but you had the large lead, so you needed some length, and they got that. Then Matsui, a scoreless inning. Peralta, a scoreless inning as well. This bullpen, through six games, again, small sample size, has not pitched well. Like, their overall um, bullpen ERA, and that includes today, which is what? They went five innings, allowed two runs. You'll take that. But their team ERA, or their bullpen ERA, is, is approaching nine even with today. So the bullpen hasn't been terrific um, to ask the bullpen to go five innings here today. Again, with a large lead, um, I think it's slightly encouraging. I'm going to go back to this point that we made Friday night, Jim. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave this out there. I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing. Uh, the results will take care of themselves. I'm not, I'm not saying three and three is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And I'm not trying to sell something that I don't truly believe because you know how critical we can be. I'm just telling you, I don't see them score like this. I, I watched them in 2023. They don't score. 2022 is herky jerky. 20, I mean, they can really struggle to score. And this, you know, to be truthful, the bottom of this lineup, I wasn't expecting a lot out of. And the bottom of this lineup has been incredible, <laughs> like through five or six games. So again, it's early. It's three and three. Um, I'm not going to book my World Series tickets as of yet or my parade route, but I'm encouraged by what I've seen from the Padres through six games. Would you agree or disagree? Oh, I would I would one hundred percent agree with that. Um and the one thing that I that I've said I'm I'm looking at for the start of this season is how they do with runners in scoring position. Like that to me um is huge. It and is. you know you, you saw on Friday right. uh they had only one at bat with a runner in scoring position. Now like we said, they're going to have some days like that. Yesterday, not the greatest thing in the world. Um, they did fight back there. They two, two for seven with runners in scoring position. Okay. It's fine. It happens, you know. But today, you get uh, a whopping seven for 18, 18 with runners in scoring position. It's crazy. Um, it's a lot of opportunities. The offense has definitely been good. Um, the bullpen has been 
very hit and miss. I, I think because yep. for the first couple games here, like the Korea series, that game two in Korea definitely inflated inflated a lot of VRAs. And then the other day, nine runs, you know. Um, I, I just think that their A team, which is Matsui, Peralta, now Cosgrove got, I mean, he got lit up. He got up. lit up. Lit up. Um, I put Brito in their A team as well. And then you have Suarez. Suarez. Like those four guys are, you're going to see a lot of um, what if they have a lead after six innings. Yep. And I think those guys have been, have been good. I mean, they've been fine. They've been, um, they haven't been dominant. Yeah. But, Brito stuff is really good. But I'm not the stuff worried. is there, right? Brito throws a yep. hundred. Uh, Suarez throws a hundred. Peralta is really good from the left hand left side. Mm -hmm. Yuki Matsui so far this year has been really good in the four innings that he's pitched. Um, you're getting these inflated ERAs from the Avila and the uh De Los Santos, um the Colic the, character. Yeah, Colic, the rule five guy, and then the yeah. other day with Cosgrove giving up like six fifth, runs in the inning or whatever it was. Yeah. So it's still a work in progress. Um, I just hope that going forward, you know, hopefully these pitchers, these starters give these guys a little more length here and that Schulte gives him just gives the gives a gets gets a little more length out of his bullpen because you don't want to see them get taxed too early on. Well, and again, I mean, we haven't even had one turn really through the rotation. Yeah, Musgrove Darvish. But I mean, King essentially a debut. I know it's not a debut. Cease it was a debut. Waldron, it'll be a season debut. You know, let's we'll look up in 10 days and see what type of length right. the rotation is providing. Uh e racing with Dale again. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. He says, uh, Thanks, I like Profar, just not an everyday player. If we upgrade left field team looks really nice. I think that's a really fair assessment. I, I think he's a really nice, versatile piece that can be plugged in late in games or can start two times a week and can play multiple positions and can help you a little bit. But I think it is exposing to play him six or seven days a week, especially when you're used to looking in left field last year and you had like a 1,000 OPS player who's like a 2,000 OPS player right now in Juan Soto. So, yeah, I I would agree with that. It feels a little unfinished out in left field, but we'll see if they can get by in, in the meantime, um, you know, with what they have in left. Profar, yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, if you if you look up at the end of the year and Profar has like 148 starts, or like, yeah, and he won't. No, that's why getting Tommy Pham on this roster lengthens everything out, and it makes your mm -hmm. bench better because getting Profar off your bench as a switch hitter to give you, you know, a professional at bat mm -hmm. instead of throwing up a guy like um, Tyler Wade. I mean, I'm not saying anything. Tyler Wade wouldn't give you a professional at bat either, but I, I just it just makes your bench a little better, okay? And it makes your starting starting nine better if you put Tommy Pham there in the lineup. And Grand Pauly needs to play like almost every day of the week. I don't want to see Tyler Wade out there majority of the time. I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, Eggy Rosario, maybe spots are here and there, but like I'm giving the spot to, to, to Grand Pauly. Pretty simple. Yeah, let's go see if he can grab it, you know? I mean, right. he needs to be playing and... Give them 50 plate appearances and see what happens. Look up after 50 plate appearances and see what type of production Paul is providing. Uh, Richard, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Very generous with the super chat, guys. If you're here, subscribe. Please smash the like button. Trying to get 200 likes, 6,000 subs at some point soon. The subs, and we appreciate the supers. Um, he says, liked how King pitched. He's a Dodger fan, by the way, but sports the channel. Uh, can't walk hitters with a big lead. The more I see Merrill, the more I like him. If Cronenworth keeps raking, Opposition can't pitch around the big three. Not sold on the Giants. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you as well and our viewers. Um, I, I would say this about Cronenworth. You saw the stuff, stuff from Too Much Mortons. Like he's hitting the ball harder than he did last year already. Multiple times he's had harder hit balls than he had at any point a year ago. So clearly um, he's made improvements. I mean, that's inarguable. And we'll see what it means from a production perspective. But I think Cronenworth, that's one of the things that's getting lost a little bit in the shuffle. Like, again, six games, but his productivity has been huge for this team. He has easily been the most improved player on this team, no question. Yeah, definitely. From last year being what it was. So if you can get this time, I mean, he's got a what? I mean, he's hitting every game this year. He's hitting five straight. I don't five know if straight? He's six. I don't yeah. I think he went I think he went hitless in in game one in, in one Korea. game in Korea. But he had to hit every 
game of the series. He's had some big time hits so far this season. Um, yeah, like how many plate appearances does he have so far? Again, it's super small. But I mean, 24 ABs, and he's, he's 375 with a 990 OPS. Again, small, but it's not two at-bats. He said 24 ABs. Like, that's great. That's a great start. And that is such a huge thing for this Padres lineup because they put him in the three-hole. And that could have it, – it, it, you had two ways it was going to go. It was exactly. going to be a, it was going to be a disaster, all right, and it would have made your lineup. It would just it would have been a disaster, and you, you mm-hmm. didn't know where, you wouldn't know where to put him. And if you put Manny back in the three spot, then your lineup becomes it it shrinks your lineup. Or which what it's doing right now is he actually is producing and becoming a threat, and it's desperately needed because you don't have many. I mean, Paulie and Merrill, the bottom of your lineup, they're lefties. But, you know, if you're going to put Cronenworth in the three hole, he needs to hit and needs to produce. And he's doing it so far. Yeah, just like Bogarts is producing at the top of the lineup. And, yeah, you know, Campusano, I mean, again, small sample size. But we've seen Campusano in his limited time in the big leagues when he's been healthy. And he flat out hits. I mean, if you could keep him healthy and make the 100 starts or whatever, he's going to be one of the most productive catchers in baseball because of what he's done. Just and he's, he's offensively. Yeah, offensively, like I think he's got the capability of being an elite offensive catcher, does he not? I mean, he's right in the middle of his prime or at the beginning of his prime, 25, 26 years old. Um, so the lineup just looks better when Cronenworth hits, when Kim, you know, looks the way Kim is capable of looking, when you have Campisano, when you have some of these young guys that have produced to some extent, it just it looks better. It really does. Then maybe I think a lot of people. I don't know if many people expected this type of offensive production, Jim. They had the 15-run game in Korea. I said, well, it's Korea. And then 13 runs at Petco. I mean, <laughs> that's two really good games out of six games. That's a lot of offense. It is. It's been so far so good overall. There's been times where you're like, oh, I, those, are the, those are the old Padres of, of yeah. last year. I mean, they were down 9-1 in a game, and they didn't score much in game one in Korea against yeah. good pitching. You know, but it hasn't been perfect. But overall, if you're just saying like, if you looked at all the games overall and added it up together, their offense has been much better, much, much better. Um, and Luis Campusano, if he continues to hit like this, I don't want to hear another thing said about Ethan Salas for another like two years. Like, yeah, as far as where, where do you want Ethan Salas even to do? Where, where would you like yeah, him to even play? As far as making it to the big leagues, like we can talk about what he's, what he's doing in the minor leagues, but to me, this is great for Ethan Salas because it doesn't put pressure on the organization to push this guy into the big leagues way sooner than he's ready for. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I really do. And now I, I still think if we're looking way down the road, I, if Salas is who they say he is, mm-hmm. I'm talking about what he's going to mean to an organization, you know, face of a franchise, even maybe beyond that, right? Yeah. then I don't know if he's even a primary catcher for a bulk of his career or not. Because oftentimes you're zapping power and shortening careers for guys to catch. So, again, that's another day. I, I want to see him you know, have opportunities to catch in the minor leagues, and then we'll look up and see. But if you have Campusano as a 25-year-old, then you don't need Ethan Salas necessarily catching 100-plus games in the big leagues. Maybe he's a future first baseman. Maybe he's a future outfielder. Um, it's a conversation for another day. E-Racing with Dale, thank you again, man. He says, uh, assumingly, Crone looking great. Love to see it look so good. Yeah, as as we were discussing, um, again, 375 and 24 at-bats, whatever that is. Is that 9 for 24? I think it is. With a 990 OPS, he's hit the ball really hard. His exit velocities have been crazy high, 108, 109, multiple times already this year. Um, that's not a fluke to me. You don't have higher exit velocities by accident. So that's not fluky to me. I'm not saying he's going to maintain a 375 batting average for the next month, but the way he's hitting the ball hard, I think, is encouraging. Yep, yep. Um, the bat, the ball is coming off his bat really well. Yep. He's having really good plate appearances. He's having he's coming up in clutch moments. Um, it's a it's it's a night and day difference for Jake this year compared to last year and the year previously. You know, mm-hmm. last three seasons is ever since he's been, joined the big league team in 2020, his numbers have gone down every single year. And it's like, 
oh shit, they just gave him this fucking contract. Like, is this really what this team is going to be dealing with right now? Is a guy who is isn't isn't young? I mean, he's he, is he thirty? I think he's thirty, or he just turned thirty or close to thirty. He's yeah. thirty, and you're like, oh my god, his contract isn't even started yet. It's not like a, a massive contract, but still, I mean, you give this guy eighty million dollars, mm-hmm. and he's declining every year. So to have Jay Cronenworth um, have a, a massive bounce back year for the Padres is, is just huge for this organization. Massive. Couldn't they, they? They literally. I'm probably they're probably sitting there like, thank God, because that was gonna that we were we were in trouble if if Jake didn't start hitting. And we're not saying he has to be Freddie Freeman or Matt Olson, but you know. We, what he's doing right now is what they want from him. And maybe it's a little overachieving, but still, it's like what he's doing is exactly what they need if you're hitting the, the three hole. Completely agree. Completely. Uh, Cruiser, appreciate you, man. Thank you for the super chat, guys. Appreciate you hanging out. Subscribe, smash the like button. Want to get to 200 likes. Do you have an update on that, Jim? How many likes do we have on the video right now? Smash that like button for us, guys. There's over 330 of you here live. So smash the like button for us. Great question, um, John. The uh, update is we have 83 likes. So okay, almost here's, halfway. Here's the thing: if all 326 plus people here watching us live um, just hit that like button, then that would be awesome. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know what's interesting here, Cruiser, and I don't know if this is being if this is tongue in cheek or or um, whatever. But Victor Rodriguez, who's the new hitting coach, paying off so far. Of course, we always criticize the hitting coach and they don't hit. And then when they do hit, I mean, they, they don't all often the, hit. <laughs> They've had the like 10 coach hitting coaches. Yeah. But uh, uh, Mike Schilt today said our approach, but then he kind of clarified. It's like, truthfully, <clears throat> excuse me, he's like, it's actually Victor Rodriguez's approach. Good. It's like the approach that he's instilled that everything is a situation. Don't give up at bats. That's kind of like the motto. We'll see if it holds true over 162 or not. But he specifically credited Rodriguez today for what he's instilled. Now, take that for whatever it's worth. I, again, they've been a very good hitting offense for six games. Mm-hmm. We'll see what it looks like in 16 games and 36 and 66. But I think it's fair. I mean, I think if they have a better offense this year, then, I mean, shoot, they change their hitting coaches when the offense isn't good. Then we should give credit to the hitting coach if the offense actually is good this year. It'd be nice if just one hitting coach just kind of like stuck three years <laughs> for like longer than th- longer than two years. Just yeah, yeah. give me three or four years where kind of like a Ruben Niela situation where you know he's not going anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Like Glenn Hoffman situation, you knew he wasn't going anywhere. He was the pitching coach forever for this team. Um, you know, as long as they can afford Ruben Niebla, like he's going to be the hitting coach here. Um for years to come. So you hope that Victor Rodriguez is the same way. It'd be nice to have continuity because his team has never been able to have continuity with the coaching staff for more than like two seasons at a time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully for everyone's sake and for AJ Preller's sake, you know, these guys, you know, perform and you can keep these guys around for multiple years because that's what winning organizations do. They have the same people in place for multiple years, four, five, six, seven seasons, maybe. And that's just such a big thing when everybody in that clubhouse knows their role. There's not like a, who are you? Like, who's this guy? And there's not a constant revolving door. You just need to have guys in place. um, And hopefully, hopefully he sticks. Yeah, no, I agree. I do. Uh, HBVV, PPPP, JJJJJ. Thank you. Um, he says, extend our Korean King ASAP. We'll see on that. That's an interesting conversation moving forward. It absolutely is. Um, why did Bob yell at the ump? So this was an infield fly rule called by maybe the second base umpire and a ball that fell in. Melvin said the ball was in the outfield when it fell in. It was not routine. It definitely changed in the inning. I think the score, I don't know what the score was at the time. Maybe 9 nothing. maybe 9-2. I don't know. Um, but remember. that's what that's what he argued today. I mean, objectively, it was a really bad call by the umpire. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, infield fly is typically, it's got to be seen as routine. It was not routine. 
And like, that's the thing. So, yeah. like you said, I mean, I think objectively or even subjectively, it's probably a, even just like being a baseball fan. Like, if I wasn't, if I didn't give two shits about the Padres or the Giants, yeah. Like, how are you calling that an automatic out? How how you? I'd be like, that's weird. It's it wasn't an automatic out. I think the umpire was is a bad call, and I think Bob had every right to, you know, yell at the umpire. Yeah. Even though, even though. And, I feel I felt like every Padres fan was like, "Fuck you, Bob. We hate you." Even though you took us to an NLCS, you're the only manager in two years to have a winning record. But screw you. Or even when God, he went into the so dugout annoying. in the first inning, he went in the dugout in the first inning when the fielder went head over heels into the Padres dugout, and that was kind of weird. And I, I mean, it was kind of probably it was probably a weird. Yeah, Bob Melvin back in the Padres dugout, probably a weird weekend in general for Melvin, which again makes sense. Now he's only going to be back one more time this year, right? They play two series. So yeah. at home, yeah. so they kind of get that out of the way. I, I thought it was kind of weird. The whole thing's a little weird. The fact that Bob Melvin is managing the Giants after two years here is slightly odd. The fact that Blake Snell's on the Giants, okay, that's free agency. We got your Cy Young Award winner with the Giants. I mean, that's part of baseball. The Melvin thing is a little more peculiar the way it all played out. We've talked about that. It is. It's peculiar. It's a little weird. Right. The, the organization chose Preller and... That's what it was, even though the, you know, there is, we haven't even talked about this because it came out Friday and we can talk about it tomorrow on John and Jim. We won't talk about, about it too talking much about here. Soto. Uh, no, it's not, a, it's not even about Soto. We can get to Soto like one, you know, later, but it was, right. it's about AJ and pretty much Seidler saved AJ. Like that, that's what it was. Sidler's everyone in the organization was like, yo, we got to move on. And it was like, Sidler's the owner. And mm -hmm. he, you know, we got that, that statement at the end of the year. Remember he, his wishes yep. were to keep Melvin and to keep AJ. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, things hit, should hit the fan and unfortunate passing of Peter. And that's what they chose. They chose, they, they, they said, they say basically said, AJ, this is your last chance. And then they decided, all right, well, now we're going to move on from Bob, too. Yeah, and I honestly think nothing has changed with the whole AJ last chance thing, obviously, <laughs> as we sit here right now six games into a season. We don't know how no. this turns out. If they're yeah. good, it's a ninth life for a cat. If they're not good, it could be the end-all, be-all, potentially, for AJ Preller, and we got plenty of time to have that conversation. We're going to get back to the chat in a moment. We do want to thank our title sponsor here on the Wrap Up Show. We can't do this without your support, whether you're here live or on replay. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like this video. But we also can't do it without Mark Nimitz. He's been with us since day one. When we started the Wrap Up Show on YouTube, Mark Nimitz was with us. That was going back to, I don't even know, the pandemic, certainly. We were on the radio before on YouTube, but Mark has been with us since day one on youtube so if you have any insurance needs you have to cut in contact with mark like me and jim have done you can get homeowners and earthquake and life insurance i've got all three of those policies through mark and he can save you so much time and money he can save you 750 dollars or more just by switching your insurance you can click the link in the description down below to get to his website which you see on screen right now and you can get free quotes online or by calling mark he's a native san diegan he is a lifelong padres fan he is a passionate supporter of our work in this channel if you support what we do please get in contact with mark nimitz the next time you have an insurance need whatever it is he's dependable reliable great service and communication auto home renters life business whatever it is get in contact with mark nimitz at farmers yeah, all his information is below on the ticker, his phone number, and his email address, nimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to our buddy Mark, let him know that John and Jim from the Wrap Up Show sent you. All right, great stuff. Let's get back to it. Again, subscribe and like. We're pushing to 200 likes tonight, live on replay. So make sure to like this video. Jim will update us on how many 132 likes, we have. likes so far, okay. guys. Hey, we can, we can okay. do more than that. We can do more than that. But that's obviously really good so far. Good job, guys. We don't want to strive for anything too good, you know, like it's like if you tell your parents, yeah, I'm going to eat like a piece of broccoli. You don't need to eat two. You said you were going to eat one. No, you need to eat two. You need to eat two. I, mean, I told Jones and he's like, I'll, I'll eat two if you give me two cookies. I'm like, that kind of defeats the purpose of having two pieces of broccoli, but okay. Um, Ryan, thank you, man. He says, Paulie and Merrill have big years. Watch the F out. It, you're saying if Paulie and Merrill have big years? Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably accurate i mean if you yeah. look up and these two rookies have hit 291 you know and get on base a lot and one of them has power and one of them steals a lot of bases then you're probably right i don't know 
if that's going to play out or not. But yes, if they have big years, that only benefits this overall, you know, offense that we've seen so far. I just would much rather see Graham Pauly in this lineup than Tyler Wade or even Eggy Rosario. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I just, um, I, I just, Tyler Wade had a nice couple of games here, but I mean, if you're bringing up Graham Pauly, you play him. You do not sit him on the bench. Mm -hmm. You put him in the lineup. Um, the worst thing you can do to a rookie is just sit him on the bench. Tyler Wade, you know what he is. He's a 590-something OPS guy for his career. Okay, Tyler, uh, Graham Pauly, he has the pop in his bat. Um, he can run into one at any time. And you just put him in the lineup. He held his, he held, he can hold his own at third base. And Jackson Merrill, you know, he's got to play against lefties. I'm just sorry. Like, we can't do a platoon um, when a lefty is on the mound to start a game f this year. Like, eventually, you're going to have to have Jackson Merrill figure out, okay, um, can he hit lefties or not? So, um, yeah, a couple days off here and there, I totally understand that. But, you know, the reasoning why Jackson Merrill didn't play the other day was because it was like, oh, I was lefties on the mound. You're like, ah, what? Yeah, but you also got to play, and I'm with you, but you got to play a Zokar. I mean, everyone's got to play. I, I know. So if he's playing four out of every five days, I'm saying Merrill. That's fine. I don't know if he will be or not. Then that's that's enough. I mean, I, I think that'll give him an opportunity. I'm with you. I'm not sitting him just because it's a lefty. But if there are opportunities to get a Zokar in against a tough lefty, yeah. then I do understand it. But your point on Paulie, and it's limited sample size, but his minor league career, his OPS is 922. He's got to play. You, you play. Why does a guy with a 922 minor league OPS sit on the bench for the San Diego Padres when yeah. you're looking for offensive production? Now they've gotten it. But they want to continue to get it right. moving forward. I mean, he he might. He, I, I have no idea what Grand Paul is going to be in the big leagues, but I do know he has got pop in his bat, and he can run it. Oh, hundred percent. And he can he can give you home runs, and he can give you that pop that you need at the bottom of the lineup. Um, this is very kind, Mark. Um, thank you for your super chat thank you, and Mark. your support. Um, he says, "I love and appreciate listening to you, boys. You guys feel like family, Aww. and I feel like I know you guys because I invite you into my home each <laughs> night." Um, you both bring value to me as a Padres fan. That's very kind, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Um, that is Appreciate very it. kind. I'm trying to think. You saw you were over at Petco the other night, and you ran into like 100 people that watched the show. I was – where was I? You know where I was, dude? You probably saw my Instagram maybe. On a whim, we went to Staples last night to go to the Elite Eight game yeah. between who? Alabama and Clemson. Okay. And I saw I was wearing an Aztecs hoodie, and I ran into some guy that was wearing an Aztecs hoodie on the concourse, and I said, go Aztecs. And then he turned around. He's like, "You're the podcast guy." And then <laughs> like, I talked to him for like. He's like, "I watch your Padre stuff, and I watch your Aztec stuff." I'm like, "Good stuff, good stuff." But yeah, yeah there's, thank there's, you for saying hi. Is the point? Yeah, there, there's people that uh, work at Petco that listen to us. There's people that work for the Padres that tune into this show. You know who you are. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a, a. I mean, it's a nice group of people that we've brought in nice and um and we're just talking baseball like we're not sitting down getting too deep in the weeds and being like his fp war was this just that like no we're just talking baseball that's it um and we we react to what we see and sometimes you might not like our opinion but yeah just, no it's gonna uh, be there'll fine. be highs and lows folks i mean oh you, yeah you, you, I, I mean, I feel like we've been – if it changes, it changes. I mean, if, if they continue to play like this and maybe get some more wins and losses, then I, we're going to be pr probably fairly complimentary. But if it doesn't, then we're going to be fairly critical. But we're going to be I unbiased, team, I promise you that. I predicted this team was going to win 80 – that was my number, 86 wins this year. It'd be a nice like, year. I think that's a good year. And probably right. a postseason appearance. Um, thank you, though, Mark, and thank you, SJL Stevens, for your membership and your very generous Thanks, super man. chat as well. Guys, if you're here, um, click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to all your super chats. Padres over the Giants today down at Petco 13-4. The Cardinals are coming to San Diego tomorrow to begin a three-game series. Then the Padres have their first road trip of the year. Um, SJL Stevens saying, do you feel the contributions have been more spread out across the roster rather than select individuals on runs? Seen last year, it was transient and sporadic. I mean, yeah, I, I can't compare last year's offensive production where there was that amazing note from Kevin where they didn't have a five-run inning until 54 games into the year, and they've already had multiple amazing. this year. Yeah. And they didn't have a four-run yeah. inning until like 28 games into the year. I remember they've that. they've already had multiple this year. Hold on, let me read this. 
Um, this is going into today where they had a five-run inning and a four-run inning. Last night, going into today, was the Padres' second five-run inning of the season. So today's their third. Jeez. They've also scored four runs in two innings. So today was their third. In 2023, they did not have their first four-run inning until their 28th game, and their first five-run inning came in their 54th game. You can't compare last year's offense to what we've seen these first six games. Not to say it's going to continue, but you can't compare it. And that's wild because I feel like that roster last year, I mean, it had more talent. I mean, when you, you had Juan Soto in the lineup, made yep. your lineup deeper. Um, Machado fully healthy at the time, presumably. It just also proves that, like, literally they could have upgraded over Trent Grisham at any point. And literally anybody would have been a better upgrade than Trent Grisham, but they continue to yeah. throw his ass out there it just for whatever reason, just god awful. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and it just shows like Bogarts had a really bad year last year, down year until the final month of the season. I mean, actually, I he, and Kevin good reminded good me, I, I didn't remind, I didn't remember, like, he actually had a really good start, he had a great start, and then he just fell off a cliff. And then he was, was because great. of his wrist, I think. I think that's at least a part of it, probably. Um, and then Tatis did not have the best of year and Machado started yeah. out slow. And then Jake also really was just really bad last year as yeah. well. So it's, it's mostly the same guys. I mean, up, I feel like anybody's an upgrade over Trent Grisham. So that's good. Um, obviously there's no upgrade over Juan Soto, but you just, as long as you have guys that are just doing their job and, 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 you know, getting timely hits here and there. And it's like, okay, they can, it's good. You're going to have bad games. You're going to have times where it's like, what the hell? feels yeah, like course. last year but overall to start the season you know the offense that the, their mission was to go start the season um much better than they did last year as far as an offensive standpoint and with runners and scoring positions and they have absolutely done that so far through the first six games of the year yeah i mean i'm a little interested to see like and we can get into it in a moment but like this series coming up because st louis is such a veteran team they just threw away a game tonight by, against the dodgers um but you'll see like veteran pitching, Kyle Gibson, Miles Mikolas, the first two games. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to see what that looks like. The Cardinals, again, have just lost three or four at Dodger Stadium, which I think we'll say about a lot of teams a lot yeah. in 2024. Um, and also the Cardinals used a lot of their bullpen here tonight and did not win against the Dodgers. So, um, but Kyle Gibson, veteran, you know, 36 year old starter tomorrow. For St. Louis, so it'll be interesting to see what the Padres is able to do. Again, today was a circumstance maybe against a guy that just hadn't pitched in the big leagues in two years, and you capitalize on that. To their credit, there were a lot of times last year they didn't capitalize on anything. So they took advantage of a pitcher that was maybe, you know, prime for the picking, so to speak. Um, all right, we'll get back to it in a moment. We do want to thank our friends over at Aura. Their co-founder, Wills of San Diego, and they have offices right here in Liberty Station in San Diego. This is a plant-based nutrition company. All of their products are plant-based, every single one. I've told you about the probiotic for two-plus years that I take every single day for digestion, heart health, mental clarity. There are so many reasons to take a probiotic. Aura has a terrific one for you. They have pre-workout supplements for you, proteins for after workouts. If you're taking a fish oil, you should take the omega-3 oil from Aura. They have sleep pills and immunity pills. I actually took a sleep pill from Aura within the last like two days, I think, before I went to LA the night before. So they have products for you. Um, it's a great company. Um, it will get you healthier, you, your family, your friends. So check them out, ORA.organic. Um, again, their co-founder Will is a huge Padres fan, longtime supporter of this channel. So if you support our work, please check them out at ORA.organic. Yeah, they have everything you need to live a healthy lifestyle. Probiotics, good for gut health. Uh, they have pre-workouts if you are looking for a pretty uh, a pretty good healthy pre-workout. They have it. Raspberry lemonade flavor is the go-to flavor. They have protein powder for post-workout shakes or if a shake in the morning is you want to, you're on the go, you want some quick protein, uh, Aura is the place to go for all of that. All organic, all plant-based. Uh, go there right now, www.ora.organic. Pick up some stuff and uh, you'll thank us later. You know, if we could touch on it for a moment, I mean, I, I do think the quotes from Scott Boris about Peter Seidler are pretty impactful and important because it's now like a little bit of a sliding glass door theory. We'll never know what the Padres would have looked like if they kept Juan Soto. You can argue that this long term may be beneficial. I mean, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know if this team is good or 2025 is good or not. We just don't know. Um, 
But, and I'm completely paraphrasing, the idea was Peter Seidler had assured Scott Boris that Juan Soto was going to be on the team, if nothing else, in 2024. And of course, we know what happened. Peter Seidler passed, and later they traded Juan Soto. Now, who knows? Who knows what that means? I don't know if we'll ever know what it means if Soto stayed as opposed to him getting traded. But, I mean, that's pretty fascinating. We were led down a path, Jim, that... No, this trade was going to happen regardless of whether Peter Seidler was the primary owner of the Padres. But, I mean, I don't see why Scott Boris wouldn't be truthful here. Talking about the former owner of the Padres that has now passed, he says that he was assured by Peter Seidler repeatedly Monsoto will be on the Padres in 2024. And he has text messages. He's got the text messages to back it up. <laughs> okay, so then I guess it is accurate. Yeah, no one can, like... Ever. Everyone's gonna know what it means, really. No one can ever tell me that um, Peter Sather wouldn't have found a way to have Juan Soto still on this team. Now, See, would I, have I, I agree with that? Would would it have worked? I don't know. I think there's a lot of dynamics and at play in that clubhouse with personalities that just didn't mesh. I I, I don't think the Machado Soto dynamic was particularly like um, fit like a glove mm -hmm. and. Who knows? Maybe the uh, the, sub the subtraction of Juan Soto made that clubhouse better. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, Juan Soto is one of the best players in baseball, and I want one of the best players in baseball on my team. And uh, at the end of the day, I know egos are egos, but like you got to fucking suck it up, and you got to play. So I think if Peter was gonna, I think if Peter were still here, Juan Soto would still be on this team, and maybe Juan Soto's on this team for a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I just, you can't tell you, I, after seeing that and hearing it, like, there's no way I believe that, um, the whole plan all along was to trade Juan Soto. I'm sorry. No. Right. And I agree. And like you said, I mean, maybe somehow they're better off for it. That jury is out. Here's the direct quote, Alden Gonzalez at ESPN. Um, this is from Boris. I only know everything that Peter said to me. Peter Sather always said to me that Juan Soto will be on his team. He said it 50 times to me. Juan Soto will be on my team. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty fascinating story. That is chat. Funny. Yeah. I'm seeing this in the chat. It's like, guys, like, oh, Juan Soto never showed this with the Padres last year. <laughs> then you never watch. Then you didn't watch the Padres last year. <laughs> I, I mean, was Juan Soto this amazing player last year for the Padres? I will give you that. No, he wasn't. But I mean, when you have a nine something OPS, nine twenty OPS, I think it was. You're yeah, one of the best was players. Was even today. higher than that. I mean, yeah. Again, I, I think it's hard. Again, heavy's the head that wears the crown, and they gave up a lot to get him, and he's going to make four or five hundred million dollars. So the right. expectations were super high, and maybe he didn't fully live up to them. And he had a nine thirty OPS and a one fifty eight OPS plus, which is a crazy number. In San Diego, he might be much better at Yankee Stadium. I mean, who knows? Maybe. He could be the American League MVP, and maybe his 2024 is a lot better than his 2023. And who knows if they could have kept him? So maybe it makes sense mm -hmm. to get what they got, considering they wouldn't have gotten anything if they let him walk potentially at the end of 2024. But I don't like the hey, it was all Soto's fault. Glad he's gone. I mean, that's not I'm what anyone said a year prior when they acquired when they acquired him. They said he was the second coming of, you know, uh, Tony Gwynn. I mean, it, it was one of the most iconic players in the history of the organization when they acquired him no yeah. oh absolutely if any here's the thing and and we can move on tonight right if you are sitting there and you're a baseball fan and you openly say out loud to somebody yeah i don't really want one i don't want one so don't my, my favorite baseball team <laughs> and who do you want exactly then i then i have to question your like Baseball, I guess acumen. Acumen. I mean, because that sentence is insane to me. It's like saying, eh, "I don't want Manny Machado on my team." Like, I don't want Fernando Tatis Jr. on my team. Yeah, because I know yeah. what people would say. I know people would say the same thing. If Manny didn't get the extension, yep, and walked after last year, and the team went eighty-two and eighty, and he said, yep. "What is this high school baseball?" and he was on the New York Yankees right now, you all would be killing Manny Machado. <laughs> 100 percent you so, guys are all hypocrites if you say that's that what i'm saying but but and i get it we're all fans so i'm right. not saying hey go buy your juan soto yankees jersey and no. you can say you know what i expected more 
I wish it would have resulted in more. I do think an NLCS has value, but I'm with you. He wasn't the, the big culprit in the NLCS run. He may have had a moment or two within there. But to say that, hey, and now, now maybe there was a dynamic at play, like you said, in the clubhouse that couldn't have been fully resolved. And maybe there is a level of accountability. But to say, like, I don't want him, good riddance, that's going too far for me with a guy that's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, he yeah. just is. He does this for another eight, nine years. He's only going to be like 33, 34, and he'll clearly be a first ballot Hall of Famer at that point. And it's fine because you're like, hey, he's not on our team anymore, so screw it. We've moved on. We, there's nothing we can do about it. That's fine. But to but to say the things like last year was Juan Soto's fault when he was the only fucking guy in the lineup to do anything last year is completely insane to me. And I will now digress and move on. Okay, apparently I'm being loud, according to my wife. Shh, quiet. Um, 619 Camp, thank you. He says, uh, I flew down from the Bay Area for Thursday and today's game and like the energy of this team so far. Any concerns about the bullpen? Love Campy and Higashioka is terrible. I think it's too early to say anyone is terrible, and I think it's too early personally to say the bullpen is quote-unquote concerning. Um, but those are some areas that obviously haven't been you know, perfect to start the year. Sorry, there's this guy in the chat, Mr. MK, who like, I'm just going to, you're in timeout, bro. You don't know shit, all right? I'm so sick. <laughs> I'm so sick. I am so freaking sick of people shitting on like players. What was that, the comment? What it was, was like comment? Soto's garbage and he never came up clutch for the Padres and this blah, 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 blah. It's like, get, oh, stop it. He, let me find, I looked up his, he hit like 300 with men in scoring position last year. But carry on. It's just I what just did he hit? I need to find it. Hold on. He hit last year. I have to have this with runners in scoring position. He hit two ninety nine with a one thousand and sixteen OPS. Better than basically any Padre probably in the last decade. <laughs> I mean, you know what I think about my think to myself is a like, man. Imagine if Juan Soto was on this team with this lineup right now, with what they're doing offensively. Imagine if you put Juan Soto, what he's doing with the Yankees, in this lineup. Holy shit. <laughs> True. Yeah, re replace Profar with Soto. I feel pretty good about this team. <laughs> pretty good. I feel pretty damn good about this roster. Mm -hmm. And you still could have got Michael or Dylan Cease. Might have taken another top prospect, maybe like Lesko or something. But you could still have the same roster. For, and without, I mean, you would have Michael King, but like... I don't know. Whatever. I'm. I just. Yeah, it's a little it's an like, annoying it subject. It is, it is, it is a weird one. And shit on Juan Soto, and blame Juan Soto, and blame Bob Melvin, and blame Blake Snell, and blame Josh Hader for last year. Were they? Were they? I don't know. The best players on the team last year. Yeah. Did they have parts? Were they part to blame? Like, yeah, they were. Everybody was to blame last season. I'm not saying that one one player is like blameless. It's just. It's just a tired like subject. It's tired. I agree. Um, all right, guys. Do want to remind you about our partners here on the wrap up show, Underdog Fantasy. In fact, you can play Padres Pickums right now by using promo code PodsWrap, P A D S W R A P. You will get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Click the link in the description down below, or it's pinned in the live chat if you're watching live. You go two for two in a pick'em, you win three times your money. Three for three, six times. Four for four, 10 times your money. Five for five, 20 times your money. If you insure it, you can still win and get one of your pickums wrong, and you still win. So double your first deposit up to $100. Use promo code PODSWRAP. That is P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Uh, you're looking at Underdog's Fantasy, Underdog Fantasy's website right now. Jim was a big, Dude. big, big winner over the weekend. So tell us tell us how you won. All right. So what they what they have in, in Underdog is, is called multipliers. So... If you like click on, um, I could do it right now, Brian, right yeah. here. Like you're okay. looking at like so, Acuna, if he hits over a half home run tomorrow, you, you don't just, you win two times the wager, not just like, it's like more, more than you typically win. Right. So that's just for, for argument's sake, John pick, um, just pick Matt Olson for, okay. I can't really see on your screen. Yeah. I need, well, I need another player from it. Let me also pick like, um, Corey Seager also uh -huh. is going to hit that. Yeah, go higher than a home run there. Okay. Boom. Now scroll down. 
Dude, give me another player. Do another player. Look at that, dude. 20 yeah. pace, 240 if that happens. Right. 12 so to 1. It just like you can win big time money with underdog fantasy. Yeah. Give me, um, give me, give me, go, 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 stop. Hold on. Give me a, a half. Oh, hold on. No. Stop. Go down to Radio Rose right now. You want a home okay. run? No, no. I want higher than a half um, RBI. A half RBI. So give me a ha- higher than a half RBI. Boom. 20, 20 bucks. Pace, 720. So you can, and then you can pick two more players if you want, John, and you can win big time money. I'm talking like thousands of dollars. I did some crazy like multiplier t- uh, today just to see how much I could win. Like just to see how much I could win. It was a five. I picked five players. The multiplier was like times 84. If I bet a thousand dollars now, again, thousand dollars, is a lot of money. <laughs> I don't, I get it. But if I bet a thousand dollars on a 85 times multiplier and I hit it, I would, I would win 84 grand. <laughs> so you can win that big time, great. big time money here. And it's not like crazy, crazy par like, um, like, uh, combinations again, John, if you just had Corey Seager, Corey Seager and Ronald Acuna, both hit home runs tomorrow, tomorrow. 12 to one, you, you win oh, almost yeah. 300 bucks. Yeah, t- exactly. And by the way, if you put down your, you double your first deposit. So if you yeah. deposit a hundred dollars right now, they'll give you another hundred. You put that, you put 50 of that down on something that's 12 to one. All of a sudden you walk away with 600 bucks Dude, and they're I, giving you a hundred bucks. So use promo code pods wrap, by the way, P A D S W R A P. And it's in the live chat, the link or click down below. So this is what happened for me this past week. All right. Opening day. I had Sander Bogarts higher than one and a half total bases. Mm-hmm. I had Fernando Tatis Jr. higher than a half a single and Shohei Otani higher than a half a double. Okay. I um, bet 20 bucks, 20 bucks on those three things happening. I won $300. So, like, you're not betting crazy money here to win crazy money. Like, you could bet 15 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and you could win, like me, over $300. Today, I had Juan Soto with higher than a half a single. I had Fernando Tatis Jr. higher than a half a double. And I had Bryson Stott higher than a half a single. The kicker here is if you pick up something, and say that player not, doesn't start or doesn't play, you're not like screwed for it. You get reimbursed. And so all, all I needed to do was hit two, uh, Juan Soto higher than a half a single and Fernando Tatis Jr. higher than a half du- double. I bet, uh, what did I bet? I think I bet, I bet 50 bucks. I won $450 today. <laughs> Big weekend. Big weekend. So go right now, download the Underdog Fantasy app, promo code PODSWRAP, all right, sign up. Your first $100 deposited will be matched. Okay, so then you have $200. So basically you have a free $100 to go and try to win money with. And you can win big time money. It's very simple. It's fun. It's super addicting. And it's you can do it with any sport, not just baseball. Yeah, and you can play Padres pick em's tomorrow because they play the Cardinals tomorrow right there at Underdog Fantasy. Uh, let's get to the super that just rolled in from HBBV. Who says I enjoyed watching Soto hit off haters? So this was a very Dude. interesting, like mind blowing moment <laughs> uh, that happened today down in Houston. Did the Yankees sweep that four game series? They did. They won. They were wow. they swept them. Juan Soto. Holy moly. He went. Um, I have the stats right here because I, re- of course, I retweeted it. That was like one of my favorite re- retweets of all time. Was Juan Soto getting a go ahead right. single off of Josh Hader? I know. He went nine for 17 with a double, a home run, four RBIs, three walks, a 600 on base percentage, and a 1365 OPS in the four game sweep of the Astros. Nice series. Nice series. <laughs> yeah. If he keeps that up, he might be American League MVP. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's what I want to do. So we're back tomorrow on San Diego Sports 760, John and Jim. I don't think we've had a show since like the 1980s because of the NCAA tournament. We've had shows here, here and there, but we're on all week. So join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. San Diego Sports 760 or search for John and Jim 760 on YouTube. We stream yeah. our show live for three hours, right? Yeah, we do. Um, in addition to that, we're back tomorrow night after Padres and Cardinals game. One of this three game series. We'll see if the Padres can keep this going. Our first look this year at Matt Waldron. 
Mm -hmm. um, against the veteran, Kyle Gibson, game one. And we'll see if the Padres can get back over 500 tomorrow. But again, we'll be here with you on the wrap-up show tomorrow night. If you have not subscribed, you need to do that for us. We're trying to get to 6,000 this month. And by this month, I mean April. So please subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button, have we hit 200, Jim? We have not hit 200 yet, but oh we are God. inching closer to that. We are at 170 likes on this show so far, and we'll probably get a bunch of people on the replay here. So if you're watching on replay, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, and it's a big series for the Padres because I think starting off the year, we talked about it, first seven games, four and three, like Got anything it. worse than that, you can't, not acceptable. Like you got to start the year no worse than four and three. Um, so win two or three here versus the Cardinals and – Let's go. And head to the road for the first time, well, other than Korea. Um, right. Okay, follow us on X, at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. Thank you for the super thanks. If you're here on replay, we really do appreciate that. Um, and again, please support our partners, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you have an insurance need, Mark is your guy. San Diegan, longtime supporter, is our title sponsor here on the wrap-up show. Click the link in the description down below. Aura, if you're looking to get healthier, check them out, ORA.organic with their plant-based nutritional products. And play along with us, Underdog Fantasy. You can win like we've been winning, underdogfantasy.com. Use promo code PODSWRAP. P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. All right. We'll see you tomorrow on the radio at 3 p.m. Then tomorrow night right here on the wrap-up show. For Jim, I'm John. Hit the like button.